If you are a Blender user, then you most likely than not know about the Grease Pencil, a tool that has been used to create amazing projects like Hero, which is a short animated film created by the Blender Studio among other Blender Open projects. The Grease Pencil was used in real productions like I Lost My Body. This film which narrates the story of a solitary hand trying to reconnect to its owner. This film employed an innovative approach by first creating the film in 3D using Blender and then overlaying a grease pencil layer for 2D animation. The thing is, the grease pencil wasn't even intended to do these things in the first place. So how this tool became a thing and what is the story behind creating it in the first place? Speaking about animation, it's no secret that we talk about a lot of animation software. So I turned to Skillshare to get myself familiar with some important software. Because Skillshare is the largest online learning community with thousands of classes led by industry professionals in film, illustration, design, freelance, productivity, and more. I think what Skillshare offers better than YouTube and other platforms is a way to know exactly what you want to learn and chart a path to do it and know exactly where you're gonna end up at the end. This not only saves you a lot of time looking around for different bits and pieces and scavenging for tutorials, but also saves you a lot of time, headaches, and money. And with the new Skillshare learning paths, it is easier than ever to acquire new skills. You can take multiple classes that resolve around one skill, ensuring the best usage of your time with a hand-picked curated list of classes aimed at students from all levels. You can learn one skill in detail and go from a beginner to a pro. For instance, I recommend following these 3D models and animations with Blender Learning Path, where it gets you up to speed with modeling in Blender in addition to texturing, lighting, rendering, and animation. So the first 500 people to click the link in the description will get a one-month free trial on Skillshare. So what are you waiting for? Start investing in yourself today and pick a path that might change your life. The success of Grease Pencil was not originally part of a planned strategy. To be precise, it was a series of unexpected events that ultimately led to something even greater. It all started in 2008, when Joshua Leung, an active core Blender developer at the time, introduced an annotation tool that he named Grease Pencil. According to a paper published by Joshua himself and Daniel Lara, the founder of Pepe Skoland and someone who used a lot of grease pencil on his productions, the idea was to create a simple pen tool with the basic color settings and animation capabilities. And they did this as a way for artists to document their work by writing notes on top of their 3D models, renders, and so on, and to facilitate collaboration within teams. Animators were also able to use the basic animation features it had to quickly draw key poses of characters directly inside Blender and to help teams plan out their shots. It was designed to be very simple, with just the minimum needs. However, the community that formed around the Grease Pencil had bigger ideas in mind and started working on things that Joshua himself did not anticipate. And this is when the true story of Grease Pencil started. So how did that go? Following that, the tale of the Grease Pencil took an unexpected turn of events, one towards success in a sense, because a community was starting to build around it and artists realized that there might be a potential to take advantage of. According to a 2019 interview by Joshua Leung, he stated that at the time, he thought that the Grease Pencil was only good enough for tasks it was intended for. However, he started changing his mind after he saw some users testing it and using it for making traditional 2D animations, with some add-on developers even starting to notice that there is potential to build tools around it. It was a humble beginning, but that all changed over the years, when Daniel Lara, yes him again, started to push a series of short animation tests, where he used Grease Pencil in ways that Joshua never seen before and he took advantage of all the possibilities that the Grease Pencil had to offer, something that wasn't fully explored at that point in time. The two men later contacted each other, where Daniel discussed how he created the animations and gave suggestions 
on how the progress could be simplified even further. I mean, the tool wasn't even created for that after all. One thing led to another, and the result ended up being a total revolution for the grease pencil tool in Blender. So let's see how that went. After the attention that the grease pencil gathered, it was clear that the Blender Foundation could no longer ignore the community's demand for the grease pencil, and they had to do something about it, especially knowing that they had their hands on and what they could make with Blender was unique by adding 2D to the mix, something that was lacking in many 3D software, such as Max, Cinema 4D, or Maya. Well, it happened in the best possible ways, because Grease Pencil was fully rebranded in the 2.8 release of the software, one of the most iconic versions of the software to date, and one that took Blender to new heights. But here is where it gets interesting. Grease Pencil was not just a random tool within the 2.8 version, but instead a key part behind its success, and a feature that was marketed as the main highlight of the release. However, it was not easy to release a feature that isn't typically found in a 3D software, and to instantly expect to find success with it. To achieve this, the team behind it had to come up with a creative way to test it before releasing it. Let me explain. According to Antonio Vasquez, a developer who extensively worked on Grease Pencil as a volunteer, maintaining the feeling of a 2D animation inside a 3D environment was a challenging task. So the best approach they took to come out with a polished set of tools that could fit the artistic requirements of a 2D production, the best approach is to work side by side with a professional production by joining forces in a project called Hero, an open source movie directed by the previously mentioned Daniel Lara. And during that period of time, the Hero team requested a lot of new features and adjustments to make Grease Pencil a tool that could respond to the demands of a proper production workflow. But what did they exactly come up with? It is also important to note that Grease Pencil in Blender 2.8 was different from the old Grease Pencil system and marked what I call in my book the true beginning of what we now know as the Grease Pencil. Because the origin behind the old system were a mere coincidence, but for this one, it was built with a dedicated 2D animation workspace, and it featured its own objects and modes, such as the draw mode, which as the name suggests, can be used to draw anything, similar to software such as Photoshop, with a set of strokes, brushes, and textures, and of course, you can also load other ones into the software if you want to. But that's a bit too generic, and not a good reason, I mean a good enough reason, to make Grease Pencil appealing, right? Well, this is correct because what makes Grease Pencil so special is the nature of the tool and the exciting set of features that are built around it. First, let's address the elephant in the room. The main appeal is its ability to create 2D animations within a 3D workspace, which comes with a lot of advantages, such as the ability to achieve dynamic 3D camera movements for 2D or to add depth and perspective. Now, in terms of the 2.8 release, there are many tools that made Grease Pencil stand out, such as a multi-frame editing falloff, and I know, this sounds complex for no reason, but to put it simply, it is a way to change and edit multiple frames at the same time, and as a side note, it was a feature that the Hero team requested. Additionally, Grease Pencil also has its own set of modifiers, which were customized to fit the 2D requirements, such as noise to change the looks of your drawings, or time offset to change the animation speed and direction, and even a way to add lighting with the help of what they call VFX shader. With a set of features like that, Grease Pencil managed to find a lot of success in both small and big studios. And this could be seen, for example, in Unicorn Wars, a French animated feature movie where everything except the unicorns in the film were made by using the Grease Pencil. And a secret weapon that they built around it is called GP Tracer, which is an add-on that can convert 3D objects into Grease Pencil drawings, which can be really helpful. It was also used in many major productions, such as the highly acclaimed Across the Spider-Verse, which makes sense because Daniel Lara, someone who I believe we know well enough, worked on it in the first place, especially it was used as a freehand drawing tool by animators to create strokes and some 2D lines and effects. 
and these were later on transformed into a mesh and used within Maya. The question now is, what's next for this tool, and is this the end of the story? For a feature that was not even planned to begin with, is nothing short of extraordinary. However, there are still a few milestones that I personally believe that the tool can still chase, because it has the potential to do so. And while it was occasionally used in both big and small productions, it still didn't set itself as a standard in the field. And to achieve this, the tool is still gradually getting better and updated regularly. And with the release of Blender 4.0, Grease Pencil seems to be as relevant as ever, because it includes the 3.0 version of the tool, the next big step as they call it, that aims to lay a solid foundation for the next 10 years. This new release has improvements in the performance and memory usage, in addition to a new architecture that can open the door for new features and tools, such as the integration of geometry nodes, improvements to the user interface, and more and better texture brushes, in addition to taking on the industry challenges for the coming years, so it seems really promising. I hope you guys found this video useful and informative, if you did, please give it a thumbs up, you can also check some of our previous videos, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.